Hi everyone, my name is Christina Haig and I am the Kindergarten First and Second Grade Literacy Achievement Director at KIPP New Jersey and KIPP Miami. So I have been in your child's classroom helping to support with literacy throughout this year. I'm so excited to be here with you today um, and talk a little bit more about what remote virtual learning will look like for our youngest kids, for kindergartners and first graders. I myself am a mom to two little boys, three years old and five years old. And I'm also very nervous about technology. So if you're feeling the same way I am, I'm here to support you. And I hope this call will help you feel a little bit more confident in moving to remote learning with your child. So we first wanted to start with just a little bit of gratitude. Actually, a lot of gratitude. We are so, so thankful for everything you've been doing to support your child through this change. We know our whole worlds have been turned upside down and everyone is balancing a lot right now. We appreciate everything that you have done and are doing to support your child and we are so, so thankful to have you as partners in this work. Today, we're hoping that this webinar can help give you a little bit more information about what exactly a day in the life of a kindergarten or first grade student will look like and set you up to know how to navigate the technology so you feel really confident and really good about supporting your child through this learning. So I'm going to walk you through the process step by step to make sure it's really easy to understand. So here's what you do first. So first you're going to want to open a new internet browser and you're going to want to go to Clever. Clever is your one-stop shop to everything you'll need for remote learning. So you will want to type in this website and bookmark it because it'll be something you'll be coming back to every single day as you start remote learning. So it's clever.com slash IN slash KIPP NJ. And it's KIPP NJ even if you're one of our students and families in Miami. So you click into that and then you're going to go to four students. Now here, if you've already logged in, your information should be saved. If you haven't yet logged in, you're going to need to add your child's um, Google School account. So you would go here, you would add in their Google School account. You should have gotten this information from their teacher, either through an email, on a document, or from a phone call from their teacher. It should end with at teamschools.org. And this is where you can add in that and then put in their password. If you have already logged on, you'll see that it's saved in here and you can just click right there and it'll take you in. So once you get to Clever, this is where you'll see the apps that you'll need for online learning. Google Classroom is going to be the main place that you'll go and the spot you'll wanna go first every day. This is where your child's teacher will post assignments and information that you'll need for the day. They'll also be using Raz Kids and Zern for reading and math. So you'll click into Google Classroom first, and you will get to a screen with your child's class that you'll click on. When you go into their class, you're gonna to wanna to go to Classwork. This is going to give you a list of all of the assignments that are due for that day. Where you're gonna to wanna to start is with the morning message every morning. The morning message is a video from your child's teacher that welcomes them, that talks about some fun uh, things from their class, that gives them feedback on their work. Um, so it's a whole class video and it's a really nice time for kids to feel connected to their teachers even though they can't be with them during this time. So what you'll do is you will go into morning message and you'll view assignments. Once you're in there, there's gonna be a link down here to the video. So you click on there, and then you'll click on the video, and the video will pop up, and you'll be able to watch the video. So your child will watch that video for about 10 minutes. And once they're done watching the video, I'm gonna take you over here. I actually had already submitted this, but what you're gonna do is you'll come over here and you'll click Mark is done. <coughs> it's okay, you don't have to attach any work here. You'll just click Mark is done. 
And that way your child's teacher will know that they watched the video um, because it's been submitted. Then you'll go back here to their classwork. You can close that. At the end of the morning message, your child's teacher will give them a question of the day. Usually this is some type of really fun question. Um, you'll see here the question of the day is, what is your middle name? So you'll click on there and then view question. Now this is a little tricky, so pay close attention because I've made this mistake a few times. You do not want to type their response into class comments. That's not gonna give them um, credit for submitting this assignment. What you're gonna wanna do is come over here to your answer and type in your answer. So what is your middle name? Say your child's middle name is Martin, like my son. I type it in there and then I turn it in. And then I turn in. And you'll see now that's been turned in. Now this is really important because this is what your child's teacher is going to use to take attendance every day. So you'll want to make sure they watch the morning message and fill out the question of the day first thing in the morning so that your child's teacher knows that they're logged on and they've started their learning for the day and can mark that in attendance. Okay, so now back to the, the list of things they're working on. Now here's where you can move through these things in any order that you want. What I'd really recommend, especially for young kids, is giving them a choice. Choice for kids gives them a sense of power, a sense of agency and control that can really be helpful for their engagement. So I would ask your child, what do you wanna do first today? And let them pick. So say your child's really excited about doing phonics for the day. You click down here to phonics and you view the assignment. Now for phonics, every day there's going to be a different video for your child to watch that's gonna lead them through some activities. I'm actually the one who's creating and uploading the videos, so it'll be me that you'll see there. So what you'll wanna do is click onto the video, it's right here, and then you'll double click on the video here. Sometimes it takes a second to load. Oh, and there I am. So then your child will watch this video. As they are watching, I'm gonna pause it. As they're watching, um, they will need a piece of paper and something to write with, because I'll prompt them to write some things down. So that's all the materials that they'll need. So they'll watch the video, they'll do the activities with the video, and at the end of the video, I'm gonna ask them to write sight word sentences. So sentences using their sight words of the week. When they're done watching the video, and click out of that, go back to Google Classroom, and what you're gonna do, need to do here is take a picture of your child's work. So I'm actually gonna stop sharing my screen for a second so I can show you how to do this. So, say I snapped a picture of my child's phonics work, and it looks like this. There are two different ways that you can upload this to Google Classroom. The first is you can download the Google Classroom app on your phone, and it makes it really easy. So I downloaded it here, and basically all you have to do is go to the assignment in the class and you can upload it directly from your phone, which is super easy. If you don't have the app, that's okay too. There's another way that's also pretty simple. So you take the picture, you click the little share arrow at the bottom, and then you share it to your Google Drive as one of your options. Make sure you're sharing it to your child's um, team schools account, your, your child's uh, school account, then you just choose where you wanna save it and you upload it and it's right there. So let me take you back to the Google Classroom to show how it shows up. Okay, so let's say we've watched the video, I sent in my child's work, now I wanna add the picture of the work so the teacher can see what they did. I come over here to add or create, and I wanna upload a picture from my Google Drive. So I go to Google Drive. And I scroll down and I try to find the picture. Oh, there it is, okay. So I've got my picture, click add. And there it is. I can add more than one picture too. Say your child writes on the front and on the back, that's fine too. Then I click turn in. Make sure you click turn in or it won't be sent um, and your teacher, child's teacher won't be able to see it. 
So you click turn in. And there it goes. And now we are done for phonics. So now we would go back to the classwork and see what's next. You can also notice as I'm moving through the assignments, the ones that we've completed have turned gray. So that gives you a nice visual picture of what you've done and what you're working on. Something I want to talk about here too quickly is providing breaks for your child. So your child is young, they're kindergarten or first grade, they're not going to be able to sit through and work through all of these assignments without breaks. So something we do in school that I would recommend doing at home is frequent breaks. So after each one of these academic learning activities, giving them either a short break or a longer break, depending on what your child needs. Now these breaks could look any way that you want them to. It could be a quick dance, you could put on their favorite song or their favorite dance video, have them get some energy out and move. It could be playing a favorite game. It could be having a snack and watching a TV show. It could be having a snack and playing with some of their favorite toys. It's really what works for your child and what's best for your child, but just making sure that they're having some brain breaks so that they can decompress so that when they come back to the computer, they're really excited to be learning and able to focus on the learning. Another thing I want to talk about is incentives. So I want you to encourage you to use incentives. This is something that we use in schools. Um, and you'll want to think about when you place those incentives. So think about the things that are the most challenging for your kids. So maybe something that's really challenging for your child is independent reading. They're just not that into it yet. They don't get excited about reading. It's hard for them. So what you'll want to do is thinking about is to think about something that will really motivate them to get that done and then make that come after independent reading. So it sounds something like this. Um, say I'm saying to my child, hey, William, you're going to go do your independent reading now. If you do a great job reading for 20 to 30 minutes and making sure you read at least two new books, you're going to get your favorite snack after this time. So then William knows that he is really like working for that favorite snack. If he doesn't do his best work, he still gets a snack. It just might not be his favorite thing. If he does do his best work, then he gets that favorite snack. It doesn't have to be a snack. It can be whatever makes the most sense for your child. Some kids are really motivated by games or by TV shows or by snacks. You know what works best for your kids. But putting those incentives and putting them after challenging work can be really, really helpful to keep kids motivated and engaged. Okay, so back to our list now. We've done phonics and we've done our morning message. Now let's go to independent reading. So you view the assignment and here are the directions. This is where you're gonna go back to Clever so your child can read on Raz Kids. So let me show you. You would go back to your Clever screen and you'll go to Raz Kids. This is what your child, what, where your child will be doing independent reading. So it might prompt you to log in using your child's account again. That's fine, just do that. And here you want them going to reading. Once they're in reading, they should spend all of their time in the reading room. We don't want them using this level up feature just yet. That's something teachers are gonna use in the future. So don't have them go there, just have them stick to the reading room. So click on there. And you can see in the reading room, these are all books on their levels. So they're all the right level books that they should be reading. There's lots of different topics. You view all, you can see more books show up. You can go to fiction books, you can go to nonfiction books, you can sort by topics. So it's a really fun place for kids to read books. There's the option here for them to listen to books or to read books. We want them primarily reading the books and reading at least two new books every day. So they should be reading for about 20 to 30 minutes every day and two new books per day. Once they've read those new books, they can absolutely go back and read some of their favorite old books we really encourage rereading because it helps with fluency and comprehension, so that's absolutely okay. But just make sure they read at least two new books every day so they're getting that practice. Okay, so once they've done their reading on Raz Kids, then you're gonna wanna go back to Google Classroom. And in the independent reading assignment, you're just gonna mark as done. To tell the teacher, yep, my child did their independent reading and they're done. 
Okay, so then let's go back to our assignment list. And after they independently read, that's when they're going to write. So for the writing, what they are going to do is they are going to pick a prompt from the prompt list and write a response. Once again, when they're done writing their response, you're going to take a picture of it and upload it. So on the prompt list, there is a list of questions for fiction books and a list of questions for nonfiction books. So they can pick one of the books they read on Raz Kids and choose one question. They only have to respond to one question and then they can write it on any piece of paper that you have at home. For kindergartners, we suggest and expect at least two to three sentences. And for first graders, we're looking for at least three to five sentences. They can also, both grades, draw a picture to match what they're thinking. So again, once they've written it out, you are going to take a picture with your phone, upload it, let's see if I can do it, upload it to Google Drive. And remember to be in your child's Google account. There we are. And then I'm gonna put it in my drive, save here and upload it. You can also use the Google Classroom app if you have that. Then you go here to add or create. Google Drive. Oh, and there it is. See, it's the first one. So I add it in. And then I turn it in. So there it is. So now I can go back to my assignment list. And look at all we've done. We have one last literacy thing, and that is the read aloud. So let's view assignment. For the read aloud, they're gonna to get to watch a video of a teacher from one of our schools reading a book to them. We're gonna rotate through the schools so they'll get to see people from Florida, from Camden, from Newark. It's a really exciting opportunity to build community across our schools. So what you'll do is you will click here. Again, it will take you here to a video. You'll click on the video. and your child will get to see one of our amazing teachers reading them a story. Now, during that story, um, the teacher will ask your child a question to think about. So at the end, they'll pose a question, and then your child's gonna talk to you about what they think the answer to that question is based on the story. So basically, your child will watch the video, you guys will talk about that question, and once you've had that discussion, you can go ahead and mark this assignment as done as well. Okay, so we are getting there. So that is all of the literacy work for your child. They did phonics, independent reading, read aloud story time, and writing. Those are done. Now we have math. So for math, part one, your child is going to go on Zern. So let's open this assignment and we see the directions are to log on to Zern and complete the assigned activities and then mark is done. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So now this is where we're gonna go back to Clever. So let's go back to Clever and see the Zern icon. So this is where you'll click into Zern. And you'll see here every day your child's teacher will post an, a lesson or an activity for them to do here. The child can just click, click start and go through the activity and work on it independently. They might need a piece of paper or a pencil or little counters to use. Um, if you don't have math manipulatives at home, totally fine and understandable, I don't have them either. You could use um, any items or objects that you have at home. Maybe you have Legos, uh, maybe you have blocks, maybe you have pieces of cereal they could use. Any little item that they can use for counting is really helpful. So we'll go on and do the activity or the lesson, and then you will go back to Google Classroom, and mark it as done. And then there's one last thing for math that they will do. And this is part two. So this is a little bit different for kindergarten and for first grade. For first grade, all we'll do is come on and do the exit ticket, which will be posted over here. For first grade, or for, for kindergarten, what they'll do is they'll watch a video, 
and then do this exit ticket. For first grade, they just do the exit ticket. So for kindergarten, they would click on the video, watch this video. Sometimes in the directions, the teacher will put the exact part of the video to watch. It'll usually be like five, 10, 15 minutes. And then once they've watched the video, then they'll do the exit ticket. This is over here, and this is what the teacher will upload. So if you click on this, you will see the directions. So this will tell you and your child exactly what to do. So this one says, on your paper, draw a number bond to represent the different colored stars below. Rewrite the number sentence. So I would take out a piece of paper and do these things. Then, once again, we would go here and we would upload a picture from our Google Drive. So if I took a picture, let's just add this one. Just like before, I could take a picture and add it here. So let's add here, turn it in, turn it in. And that way your child's teacher will be able to see their work and help them with their work if they need it. So at the end of the day, you can do one last check through all of the activities. You can see this enrichment one is here. Based on your school, this might look a little bit different, but each day there should be an enrichment um, opportunity for your child. It might be dance, it might be music, it might be art. This is usually um, an opportunity for your child to work on some of these different subject matters outside of literacy and math. So depending on your school, this will look a little bit different, but what you can do is just click in, read those directions and they'll tell you what to do. And if there are any links for your kids to watch, like this one is a Zumba class, um, you can click right in there and your child can do that activity. So I'm gonna mark that as done. All right, so you can see a quick scroll, everything for the sixth is now gray. Your child has completed all of the activities. These will be the same activities that your kids will get every day, the same subject matter. It'll change the exact lessons, but every day they will have a morning message and a question of the day. Every day they'll have phonics, independent reading, writing about reading, and read aloud story time. Every day they'll go on Zern Math and have an exit ticket. So this will really help you and your child build routines around this and help them get really comfortable in knowing what to expect. We know that's a big part of kids being successful both at school and now with their remote learning at home. So thank you again for all of your support. If you have any questions, your child's teacher is a wonderful resource for you stop sharing for a second. So if you have any questions, you can reach out to them. They can provide more information. We also have a support guide um, where you can go to get some of the questions that you have answered as well. Again, thank you so much for your support and your partnership. We are so thankful for you and for your students.